Hi, everyone. Um, thanks to the hosts for um, introducing me. Um, I decided to, for that reason, to skip a couple of the slides and tell you first about... So let me go back here. So I'm going to reshuffle the order. Um, I'm going to tell you a bit about um, the future of EdTech and what it can hold on humanity. And then I'll go back uh, for the ones that are interested and tell you a bit about us. So we think a lot about predicting the future and in tech summits like this one uh, specifically. And I'm going to take you back to the year 1899, where a group of artists were commissioned to draw what they think the future could look like 100 years in. And right now, I'm going to show you these pictures that these artists drew over 100 years ago. So can anyone think what this man in the picture is doing? He's a person speaking directly into a, a microphone that's connected to a speaker, and that speaker is connected to a typewriter. Probably at the time, they thought that this is what speech-to-text technology could look like. What about this one? There's this teacher uh, grinding some books into a machine, and these books are then connected uh, through wires to these earphones, probably thinking that this is what um, downloading a book or like an audio book could look like. Now, we always think of predictions of what the future could look like. And if you think of the very early days of TV, and it, when it first launched, it was basically digitizing the offline world of theater onto the TV. So you would see theatrical plays being portrayed on a TV to the extent that the curtains would open up in the beginning of um, the, the session for the ones that remember it. But then you would think, what does all of this have to do with EdTech? I think that EdTech is still in the, in the days where the curtains are being opened on TV. Can anyone spot the difference between these two pictures? No? 70 years. So much time has passed, but so little has changed. And if we think of EdTech, we can argue that to a certain extent, we have been digitizing the offline world into um, technology. But I think the future will be different. And if we think of the immediate innovations that are happening in the world of EdTech, um, we can think of gamification. So right now, a lot of EdTech startups are gamifying the experience to make it more enjoyable, more engaging, and more fun. And many other EdTech startups are also connecting students and learners around the world through social learning platforms and just making it a more social experience rather than learning in a silo. And another immediate innovation that's happening in the EdTech space is the power of assessments and enabling students and learners with their ability to know where their strengths and weaknesses are. But I think that education is still, and EdTech is still not where it is supposed to be in the future. And we believe that we're still in the phase where we're judging the fish by its ability to climb a tree in the education world. But the future will have individualized learning patterns for every student based on their own learning pace and learning ability. Think of the strongest and best chess player in the world right now. Okay, so I'm going to make a bold statement. The AI of EdTech will be far superior to the greatest tutor we know. And I'm going to give you a real-life, very simple example to explain what I mean. Let's say a student got this question in class. Three plus one. You could answer one, two, three, or four. And let's say this student answered incorrectly and chose two. Now, how will the platform analyze this specific answer? The platform could think that this student has probably thought that the, the addition function is, an, is a subtraction function, and hence choosing 3 plus 1 equals 2. And then for the student that answered 4, they probably got it right. For the student that answered 1, they probably have no clue what math is. And for the ones that answered 3, they could also think that that student had, had 
a misconception between addition and multiplication. But let's go back to the student that answered too. How will the platform further analyze this? They would go on further and validate by asking another question to see if that student again makes the same mistake of uh, substituting subtraction with addition. And if actually that mistake happens, the platform will take the student to a lesson that explains the basic difference between addition and subtraction. And then it would take that student on and on and on with learning journeys curated to their own learning abilities and to the mistakes that they're doing and the things that they're getting correctly in order to curate a learning journey for that specific student. Now, think of a classroom of 30 people. How can the teacher keep track of all of these learning journeys and different learning combinations that every single student gets right or gets wrong? And this is only for a very simple question in maths of 3 plus 1. Now, what happens in the world of traditional schooling when a student answers 3 plus 1 equals 2? This. And I think, what does this mean? It means that the days of concentrated elitist product for students for a very small niche are going to be a thing of the past. The future will have the best learning experiences for students at masses, at scale, and the best quality possible instead of having it concentrated for a very small group of students thanks to technology. Now, here's a, a short story that I shared with the team um, a few weeks back. It's the year 2100. The region is flourishing. A lot of innovations, arts, crafts, um, and prosperity in the region. And then this historian comes in and starts to really dig and try to understand what has happened to be able to propel such a region that much in a very short period of time. And then they realized that in the decade between 2020 and 2030, the EdTech space was born. And Abwab, amongst so many other startups, came about to unleash the human potential, radically transform, uh, transforming how that generation thought and learned and evolved. And in the, region, in, the, in the decade between 2030 and 2040, there was a new wave of thinkers and innovators where in the next eight years, it led to a lot of prosperity leading up to the year 2100. I'm going to leave you with a story that Steve Jobs shared back at the time when the first Apple Macintosh was uh, produced. This study essentially looked at the efficiency of calories spent per kilogram of weight per kilometer traveled. And at the bottom of the chart came the mouse with the least efficiency, and the condor bird came all the way at the top, being the most efficient creature. And guess what? The human being came all the way at the bottom with the mouse. But interestingly enough, when the human being was aided with a bicycle, they came all the way to the top at the efficiency level. And when Steve Jobs launched the Apple Macintosh, his claim was that the computer is the equivalent of a bicycle for our minds. My claim today is that EdTech will be the bicycle for learning and human intelligence. Now I'm going to go back and tell you quickly about us. The only way to do it is go, to go back in the slides. So I'm Hamdi. Um, I'm one of the co-founders of Abwab. Abwab is a platform that allows students to learn, solve questions, compete with one another, and ask uh, questions to other students and teachers. Um, I have two co-founders, and we're very fortunate to have an extremely strong team of 
Ivy League students, ex-founders, ex-Uber, ex-ride-sharing people, all believing in the mission. We're operating in the Middle East and North Africa, across five countries, hyper-localizing the experience to students um, that is based to their national curriculum, where students can come in, learn concept-based lessons, solve questions, track their progress, and ask questions. We've scaled massively in the past two and a half years, reaching um, hundreds of thousands of paying students. And students today are solving millions of questions on our product every single day. Thank you very much. Um, it's good to see you, everyone. Thank you.